Hi guys, today we are going to be continuing the journey trying to find the best available shoe for high rocks competitions and the wider hybrid sport. Now throughout this video we're going to be featuring the Endorphin Pro 3. But the problem was uh, I didn't quite know how to pronounce the manufacturer. So throughout this video I'm going to be referring to it as all of them. So you may hear me say Saucony or Saucony or Saucony. Now rest assured these are in fact the same shoe and the same manufacturer. I just couldn't figure out which one to use. Alright, enjoy the video. Right, right. So let's have a look at these shoes, all right? Uh, nestled in amongst all of these other super shoes, I'm gonna take a look at the latest weapon in my arsenal. Oh, okay. So here we are, the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3s. Look at that. Blooming beautiful. Yes. Right, I'm gonna get them out. Get rid of the box. Like I said, if you go to Start Fitness or SportsShoe.com, there's many codes floating around out there that can get you 10% off and free delivery. So really shop around, guys. It's really important to get value for money. I could not justify spending £229 on a pair of trainers, but I could just about justify 134 So it's really worth just waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. That's half the battle is waiting, even if you've got your eye on a pair. Alright, let's take these McDonald's straws out of the shoes. Let's talk specs for just two minutes, okay? This is the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. It is the Prospect Quartz Rose Colour, so uh, basically what we've got here is a sparkly pink shoe, and I mean really sparkly. It has almost a mermaid's tail texture and colour all along here and over the mesh. The shoe is a size UK 10 and the weight is 204 grams and if you had a ladies one it would be about 176. The heel stack height is 39.5 millimeter just here and down the bottom we've got 31.5 millimeter and that means it's got an 8 mil drop from heel to toe. Combine that with the rocker format, the rocker profile, as you see it's got curved up at the toes and curved up at the heels which gives it that rocker sensation when running which I really like. Add a full length carbon carbon plate into the into the foam there and you have got yourself quite the ride. Alright, let's have a little look around the shoe. We've got a gusted tongue, a really nice heel counter. You can tell that the weight of the shoe is little over 200 grams so that all of that weight saving technology is built in. The shoe is pretty much see-through. Again, part of that is to save weight. You see it a lot in the in the super shoes that they have a, a fine mesh over the top these days. Uh, sometimes they try to sell that as oh, keeping your feet cool, but it's more just to preserve weight. Other things that bug me about, say, that shoe, is the movement of the shoe liner. Now, the shoe liner in these is, is at least stuck down. So it's not, it's not moving around, though I suspect it could come out with a little bit of force. The outsole, let's have a little look at that. Right, so we've kind of got a two-tone a two-tone outsole grip display there. The front is lined on the toe, that way, sort of laterally, and then it goes into sort of a boilerplate kind of grip there and then back to sort of lined on the heel. Uh, if you look at the actual shoe itself, it is a, a meta rock, a rocker design. I've always got on well with meta rockers. It, they just sort of suit my gait. Looking at the shoe, this is a massive one for me. And I'm going to compare it directly against the shoe I used at High Rocks last. The width of the midsole here. You can see that this has a massive chunk that is under the arch. Now it's a neutral shoe. It's important to remember this is a neutral shoe, but it is inherently stable. What does that mean? It means that there is support under the arch. There's not support in the arch, like where your foot is, but where it touches the ground, there is support there. That means that it will not roll in in the same way these shoes do. 
So it's, it's just important to know the difference between something that is inherently stable and a stability shoe. Stability shoes are reinforced in a number of ways to prevent the arch from collapsing. These don't prevent the arch from collapsing, but they do prevent the shoe from rolling and therefore become inherently stable. So that is something that is of huge importance to me. Now the carbon plate is visible from underneath, here and here. And it has fantastic reviews on its energy return. And I think it's only second um, to the Alpha Fly. Now the Alpha Fly has a number of proprietary and unique uh, energy saving technologies built into it, including these sort of air pods under the toes that give you that little snap when you lift off. Obviously these don't have that and that's a good thing when talking in terms of high rocks and hybrid fitness because you don't want that. When you put your toe down into a push you want to be able to provide that energy straight through your foot into that sled to make it go. You, what you don't want every time you put your foot down is a squitch. Now the, the heel count is important because part of pushing something means providing a lot of stress through the shoe. If you're on your toes a lot and the shoe is bent, that means it's the carbon plate inside of it is fighting back trying to straighten the shoe. If you haven't done your laces up and done a heel lock, what's likely to happen is it will just immediately boing back into that sort of configuration and leave your heel up here somewhere. Now, I decided to go for the pink set because it kind of matches my wife's new shoes So, and we've got a competition coming up together so uh, and, uh, plus the other two colours were crap, they were like white and black or whatever they, but, so these were the most garish and that's kind of what's cool about trainers at the moment the more garish the better and it's, I think it's my first ever pair of pink shoes um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put them through my three standard no bullshit tests first one is a slow and steady test just to make sure that the shoe is laced up right, doesn't rub, fits okay, I don't need any kind of modifications to the shoe, I can just run in it, that will highlight any problem straight out of the gate. Test two, I'm going to take it to the gym and put it through all the Hyrox exercises one at a time, filming quite close up the shoe just to see how it performs. Again, things like the sleds and the stability components are, that are required when doing lunges or farmers carrying, things like that, that's sometimes a bit of a pain. I will be able to analyze most of those movements there. And finally, I'm gonna go and do a speed work session in the shoe. So some 400s, some 200s, some 100s, at varying degrees of speed. The dynamic of the shoe will change, the dy dynamic of my running will change because I will be going that much faster, I'll be lifting up more onto my toes, testing the shoe's energy return quite significantly. With all three tests complete, I will have a more rounded opinion of the shoe. Uh, I will then continue to train in it for the next three weeks leading up to High Rocks London. Hi guys, today we have come out bright and early to test the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3s. Now today we are here to conduct the first of three tests, my standard three tests. The slow and steady run, the gym hybrid high rocks test and then finally the speed work test. The idea being that we get a nice rounded opinion of how these shoes perform through the hybrid high rocks lens. miles into my steady run really steady occasional bursts but what I am noticing is that these shoes have a fantastic energy return there's a nice bounce there it doesn't feel like it's sucking the energy out of your feet it feels like it is providing you that extra bit of speed 
it's hard to tell at this point and I'm interested to see what the speed work has to show about that so we'll do that at a later date in a different test but for today they're a very comfortable shoe they don't rub anywhere they're exactly the right size for me so if you're buying a shoe get your exact size not one up or down uh, and that sort of the foam and carbon plate combination in this particular shoe is really good and the best thing about it is that the the support for the overpronation this sort of uh, inherent support in this shoe is is absolutely outstanding there is no feel when you're just generally running that you you've got that in inward inclination which is fantastic from a neutral trainer anyway we're going to just finish this off a couple more miles and get going so i'm at the gym doing the Sosni and Open Pro 3 High Rocks tests to see if it's all it's cracked up to be. Apart from being the brightest set of shoes I've ever had on my feet, <laughs> they're actually all right. <laughs> they feel really good, really springy, feel fast enough. Okay guys, I'm gonna try and talk you through my gym session. We're gonna do the High Rocks exercises in order, starting with the Ski Erg. Now there's not a huge amount to report on the Ski Erg because you're static for the most part. But when analysing your feet, when doing the activity, you can see that the heel lifts off naturally and the foot rocks. Now, in a rocker shoe, that sort of complements the design. Station two, the sled push. Lots of talk about the sled push and trainers. Ultimately, the bottom line is, if your trainers can stick to the carpet uh, through the force of pushing the sled, that's all you can ask of your trainer. Now, I'm glad to report these did that very well and it's important to remember that old heel lock situation. Now, station three, the rope pull. I tried this through a variety of different techniques for pulling the rope, just to ensure that there was no slip on the trainer. As you can see, there wasn't that of any kind. Ooh, fancy shoes, look at them. Station four, the burpees. Not much to report here. You spend a lot of time on your toes, uh, and land in. There is a nice spring in the from the carbon plate and the foam and there's a nice landing sensation. It's very soft when you land on them. You do sort of tip backwards and forwards again. That's probably down to the sort of rocker shape of the shoe. Not much to report really. Station five, the row machine. Now I've included the clip of me scrapping my feet in because it's important to make sure that this is okay. Now shoes like the Nikes, they uh, often fall out of the rower machine foot restraints because of the fins that are on the back. Station six, the farmer's carry. Now previous shoes had exaggerated overpronation when I was using these. I'm glad to report this was much less the case when carrying these weights with these shoes on. Station seven, the lunges. Again, this is where the overpronation would become more obvious. Each time the foot goes down, the ankle wants to lean inward. And station eight, the wall balls. Now you can see they tip in a little bit, but that's probably more to do with my form than anything else. Again, not much to report here. They passed all these tests with flying colors. Finally, just a bit of running on the treadmill to show what full ball running looks like. Today I have come down to Watermead Country Park to complete my running and hybrid fitness tests on the Sorconi Endorphin Pro 3 trainers. Now today, the final test is a speed work session. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a 100, 200 and 300 meter set of repeats as fast as you can, 70, 80 and 90%, sort of that sort of thing. And we're gonna get the cameras nice and low to film the actual shoes as they pass by. And then if we've got anything else to report, it will be added to the well-rounded review at the very end of the video.
Okay guys, that concludes this last and final test for the Sorconi Endorphin Pro 3s. I now have a really good impression of what the shoe is like under stress and speed. Uh, and it is quite a positive feeling. The shoes feel fast, uh, but I don't want to spoil it. I'm going to conclude from the office uh, at a later point. Uh, right now I'm going to go home, have some uh, food and drink and think about what I want to say about these shoes. All right. All right, guys, let's try and bring some sort of summary to these tests that I've done with the uh, Sorconi Endorphin Pro 3. Now, let's just really quickly talk about what I liked about this shoe. First of all, the profile. I enjoy the look of it, the color of it, even the sparkly mermaidness of it. Uh, it is a fantastic piece of kit. What I like, I like the stack height. I feel that this could be a little bit more jazzed up. It's just big and bland and you know, bare. And so, uh, and it, because it's so big and white that it's gonna attract your eye to any damage that's done to it. Hi, Mark. Uh, the underneath of the shoe has a variety of different treads. The, my only criticism about this was when it was a little bit wet out on my tests as I cornered or accelerated, I could feel slip. But that's, it was only a tiny thing. Now, what is amazing is this piece here, this piece. This is what separates it, say, from the Puma range. Its inherent stability was obvious. As I could feel myself try, it, trying to fall inward, this piece of foam here, this piece of, it's right there under the arch, it provides the inherent stability. Like I mentioned earlier, not a stability shoe, but it provides enough that it doesn't encourage the roll in. There's nothing in the arch in here. It's very much a neutral shoe, but by having this here, it makes it accessible to those that might overpronate a little bit. So really fantastic. The, the upper is very visually stimulating uh, and it's very lightweight. The whole thing is about just over 200 grams. The carbon plate and the foam underneath, fantastic. They just provide you with such great energy return. Um, it, it, when I was running just casually, I felt myself pulling away from Holly who was filming. And when I was doing sprints, I felt fast, really, really fast. Uh, so, and yeah, I, I love the, the Meta Rocker feel, backed up with the foam and the carbon. It just makes for a wonderful choice for me. Now, there are all the things I liked. Uh, one tiny little thing that, I, that, and this is tiny, and it features quite a lot. You are told with regards to Hyrox and things like that, that you must heel lock your shoe, right? And that just means by putting an extra loop here and threading back through. Now, if you do that on any shoe straight out of the box, probably any shoe, you find that you run out of lace. It, you literally just run out of lace. There's like hardly anything left. All that means is that I would have to go out and source some bright pink alternate laces, which is no big whoop, but um, I just thought I'd mention it because obviously if you don't heel lock, you'll have like an abundance of lace. So um, yeah, tiny, tiny microscopic thing. Now, while these shoes are fantastic, uh, I did not just pluck these out of the air to test. I did my research uh, to figure out which was the next potential shoe. Now, the Nitro Elites, they're used by like Hunter McIntyre, but I didn't quite get on with them because of the, the overpronation problems. So I've moved on to a few people down the list in the Elite 15. In fact, the, the Endorphin Pro 3s feature more than any other shoe. So I think that's probably a good indicator that it is in fact a quality piece of kit. Uh, people like Rich Ryan, Michael Sandback, Peter Schiller, and most recently uh, in the doubles record breaking attempt at Birmingham with Hunter McIntyre was John Wynne. And he was in a pair of the yellow ones of these. So lots of people uh, getting on board with the Endorphin Pro 3s, including Mark Lewis, who uh, I bought a pair on my recommendation only to burn a hole in the uh, foam with the treadmill on day one uh, and then proceeded to colour it in with pen. And, but he did then go on to uh, do uh, two Hyrox events, one of which he podiumed in pro. So um, again, proof is in the pudding. They provide you just with that little bit of energy and are very Hyrox compatible. Now, the ne very next step for me is to take these back to the gym and train until London. And then at London, I will get a, the best possible uh, idea of what these are, are, you know, how, where they feature in the, in the list of 
great Hyrox trainers. Uh, everything I've seen so far suggests that they're going to be brilliant, so fingers crossed. But I will let you know at the end of my race day video from, from that event. So anyway, uh, that's the end from the Endorphin Pro 3. Sorry, it's a bit confusing about the pronunciation of Sorconi, Sorsony, Sorconi. No, uh, still none the wiser. Um, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Please give the channel a subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.